Hello everyone. So in the previous video, we try to see what probability is and why do we study probability. So now let's dive a little deeper and get into the workings of how we use probability. To do that, first we need to be aware of some terms that we use from a different field of mathematics which we call set theory. So these are the terms that we need to be aware of to better understand probability. So let's look at the first term that we need to understand. The first term is a set. So a set basically is just a collection of different kinds of data or different kinds of value. So anything can be a set. So even for example, the all the clothes in your wardrobe can form a set of values. The numbers 1 to 10 can also form a set of values. The seven different colors of a rainbow can also form a set of values of different colors. So if we try and look at the definition of set, if I write a collection of these four numbers, this also forms a set of the first four numbers. Now this is the notation that we use to denote a set. The curly brackets denote the start and the end of the collection and all the values which are present in the set are separated by a comma. Now every single value which is there in the set is called an element. So every single value which is present inside the set is called an element of the set. So the next term that we need to look at is a subset. So a subset basically is again another set which contains some of the values of a parent set. So for example, if we consider the same set of values that we had looked before, this set 1 comma 2 will be called a subset of this set. Why? Because this contains two values which are both present in this set. But if we say, suppose if we name this set as A and if we name this set as B. Now if I say that the set A is a subset of the set B, this statement will be wrong. Because in the set A, I have values 3 and 4. And in the set B, I do not have these values. So all the values which are present in a subset should be also present in the parent set. So this is the concept of a subset. So now we have looked at the terms set, an element of a set and a subset. So now we are ready to look at the terminology of probability. So let's have a look at the probability tree of terminology. So the first term that we need to understand is what we call an experiment. So an experiment basically means any set of steps or actions or instructions or a procedure that we follow to reach a predefined set of results or outcomes is what we call an experiment. So an experiment can be something very simple. It can be something as simple as tossing of a coin or rolling of a dice. So when I toss a coin, I follow a set of steps. So I take the coin on my hand and I toss it with my thumb and then the coin falls down on the ground and I see if it is heads or tails. So this is an experiment. I have performed a set of steps and I get a result. So the result that I get out of tossing a coin is either heads or tails. So in studying probability, we'll have a look at multiple such experiments and we'll analyze it. The experiments are further divided into two different categories, as you can see from the tree of terminology. So the two different types of experiments that we study about are the first one is called a deterministic experiment and the second one is called a probabilistic or a random experiment. So if we have a look at a deterministic experiment, a deterministic experiment is an experiment where if we repeat the same set of steps with the same exact inputs, we'll end up with the same result. So this is what we call a deterministic experiment. For example, suppose if I throw a stone up in the air, now it doesn't matter if I, from which direction I throw it or with what speed I throw it it will still come back to the ground. Similarly, all the experiments that we perform in our science labs, we use, we give some kind of inputs to the instruments that we use. So if we follow the same steps and we give the same inputs, we'll always end up with the same result. 
So these are examples of deterministic experiments. Now the second experiment that we look at is what we call a probabilistic or a random experiment. So in a random experiment, if we repeat the experiment with the same set of steps and the same inputs, we might still end up with a result which is not exactly the same as we got earlier. So for example, suppose if I roll a dice. Now, doesn't matter how many times I roll it or how I roll it, I might end up with the same result or I might end up with a different result. Now suppose I toss a coin. Now I can get either heads or I can get tails. So even if I toss the coin in the exact same manner that I have done before, I might still get a different result. So these are what we call random experiments. While studying probability, we'll deal with random or probabilistic experiments more. Now that we understand what an experiment is in the context of studying probability, we should have a look at the next term in the terminolo terminology tree, which is the sample space. So now we'll have a look at what is a sample space and how do we define a sample space for a random or a probabilistic experiment. Now a sample space is the term which is given to the set of all possible outcomes or results from performing a random experiment. So for example, suppose if I uh, toss a coin once. Now I know that there are two outcomes of tossing a coin, right? I can either get heads or I can get tails. Now there is a third possibility also, but that happens only in Bollywood, right? So for all practical purposes, we can consider that these are the two outcomes that we can have of tossing a coin. So now what is the sample space of this experiment? The sample space is given by the set of all the possible outcomes of the random experiment. So we have put the curly braces to denote that we are writing a set. Now what is the, what are the two outcomes of toss, tossing a coin? The first outcome is getting heads and the second outcome is getting tails. So the sample space for cos, tossing a coin once is the set containing the value heads and tails. Let's take another example. Suppose if I roll a dice once. Now I know that a dice has the numbers 1 to 6 on its faces. So I know that I will either get 1 or 2 or 3 or 4, 5 or 6. So I'll get one of these 6 numbers. So now what are the possible outcomes that I have? I can either, either get 1 or I can get 2 or I can get 3, 4, 5, 6. So the sample space is going to be the set of values, uh, is going to be the set which contains all these values. So the sample space is going to be the set which contains all these values. So this is going to be the sample space of the experiment of rolling a dice once. So now that we understand what is a sample space associated with a random experiment, in the next video, we'll go on to understand about a very important concept in probability, which we call events. See you in the next lecture.